not just women are in danger, but all marginalized people. Where being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election. But good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything. Boston Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the Pete history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history. What body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalic. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. On the 11th of October, 2019, Friday Java, beaming from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. Uh, Boston Red here in the Jerry Pippen Memorial Broadcast booth. Very interesting uh, Friday morning here. The the uh, Syrian army is now in, uh, excuse me, the <laughs> the Turkish army is now in uh, Syria. We misspoke there. Sorry about that one. Getting ahead of ourselves looking at our uh, audio feed. Anyway, nonetheless, uh, they are uh, attacking by air and by ground with the, uh, are targeting the so-called uh, Syrian uh, Free Army, which is uh, composed of many elements, including uh, Kurds, and the Kurds, uh, at least the Kurds in Turkey, uh, and the Kurdish uh, party there. The Kurds are are not only in Syria, they are in Turkey, they are also in uh, Iraq. And all is all a border uh, region there, so we are going to have uh, many machinations involved in that. Uh, part of the problem was uh, D.J. Trump decided to pull out some American advisors or special forces or whatever they were, about 50 of them. There are over a 1,000 uh, troops, American troops, in uh, Syria, so this is a small portion of those. However, this particular territory uh, uh, contains uh, some of the uh, some camps for uh, refugees and some also some... Uh, prisons for uh, former ISIS people. So now who's guarding those? We don't know. But part of the problem here is uh, you have uh, the foreign policy, a Wilsonian uh, foreign policy, and you'll hear quite a bit of that, uh, about it, I should say, from various uh, analysts on the scene and various articles. I believe we have one from the Washington Post uh, talking about that, and we have George Willett. I read it over earlier tonight, but I was involved in some other things. So, therefore, uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes here and look at 
that historic situation. That has been one of the big, very big problems that Wilsonian foreign policy is uh, crafted uh, by the racist uh, former uh, president of Princeton uh, University, one of the only uh, presidents to actually have a Ph.D. Woodrow Wilson, the man that segregated Washington, D.C. But nonetheless, this uh, foreign policy existed, continued on in uh, various forms. Uh, the Democrats it ran it for 40 years, and it's still being run under the State Department on the Hillary DeMonza Clinton. That was what they used, a cookie pattern. Uh, Trump somewhat has wanted to revise some of that in terms of these uh, endless uh, wars and uh, troop deployments, etc. M- uh, wanting to pull uh, troops out of Afghanistan. They've been there over 18 years. And uh, various other parts. In fact, at one time, wanting to lure uh, troop elements uh, on the Korean uh, Peninsula. They should have been eliminated long ago. And also in Japan. These are leftovers from the uh, Great Patriotic War that was uh, over 70 years ago. So in other words, those are some of the things we speak of here as needing to be uh, cleaned up. And if you uh, look at uh, some of the other candidates in the Democratic sweet stakes, we we haven't heard a lot about so-called foreign policy and the need to move the foreign policy on to a... 2019, 2000, uh, 2020 uh, foreign policy and not this continual racist colonial policy that they have. And this this is something that they continuously fall back upon and this uh, generates enormous problems, not only in uh, Syria, the idea of overthrowing a government elected in Syria under uh, Bashar uh, er, uh, Bashar uh, <coughs> and his uh, his government there in uh, Syria, and uh, the uh, murder of Colonel Gaddafi in uh, Libya, and nothing but chaos in uh, Libya. It's a uh, failed state now, and the government, the so-called recognized government, uh, only controls uh, the uh, capital of Tripoli, and that is the end of their... Uh, uh, situation as in, uh, in Syria, progress is being made there, primarily because of uh, the uh, combined forces that are fighting there, along with uh, President Assad's uh, forces. And the Russian uh, Federation is providing a lot of air power there, and they have driven ISIS back. Now, the whole situation is is clearing out some of those pockets, and they would have been cleared out had not been. For American forces of uh, being there with the so-called phony uh, Syrian Democratic Front is nothing more than a uh, proxy uh, operation there. And as DJ Trump said, these uh, soldiers, uh, Kurdish types, were paid very well to fight. No doubt about that. This whole thing has been a scam. But it's made up and presented to the world as a quote-unquote human rights uh, campaign. Be very, very careful of these and some of the uh, MGOs that are used uh, to further uh, this Wilsonian uh, foreign policy that should have been uh, put to rest 40 years ago. So we continue to have that in the uh, foreign uh, uh, situation there. Uh, l- let me just bring you up to date on the uh, baseball series. The National League uh, Championship Series is now set. It will start uh, tomorrow night in, or uh, tonight actually, in St. Louis, Missouri. They will uh, take on the Nationals from Washington, D.C. in the National League. And on Saturday night, the uh, American League Championship will start in Houston, Texas. And the Astros will take on the Yankees. Now, the surprise eliminations there, the Dodgers, of course, were um, eliminated, <laughs> literally out of the series, and they are home watching it on uh, TV by the, uh, by the, uh, by, by the uh, Nationals in Los Angeles. And we have the Cardinals eliminating the best team in the National League, that was Atlanta. Uh, In Atlanta, they scored, um, what was it, uh, 11 runs or more, somewhere on my notes here, and we'll get to it in the sporting news, in the first inning. 
And the Dodgers, who had had uh, pretty good pitching up to now, Kershaw was out there in relief. He's, of course, a starting pitcher. And uh, the manager left old Kershaw in uh, too long. And the uh, two runs, they tied it up. The Nationals tied it up. And they went ahead to uh, win. But again, the Dodgers had been flirting there. They were in the World Series last year. They have been in the National uh, League uh, Championship Series the last few years. And have just not been able to go anywhere. Of course, our um, award-winning uh, Cubs of Wrigley Field, uh, they've been home for a long time. So many of these teams uh, will be uh, retooling. There's no doubt about that. Joe uh, Madden has already been fired. He was the uh, coach of the of the uh, Cubs. And what will happen in Los Angeles? Well, we'll look to see. Uh, the manager there is no doubt probably in jeopardy also because they have not been able to bring a championship to Los Angeles. But personnel have changed there. They had some rookies on their team. And at the same time, uh, the pitching has, uh, the pitchers, I should say, has uh, definitely uh, changed. So we'll look forward to the National League uh, Series, the Cardinals, and we follow them fairly closely uh, because of the Cubs uh, this entire uh, uh, season. And they have the sluggers, and they have the pitching uh, there. And, of course, one of the teams that had, the, the I think, the best ERA in the American League was the Tampa Bay Rays. I was not aware of that. And they used multiple pitches uh, last night but came up short, what was it, 6-1 to one of their um, Houston just had, uh, had the hitting, and Houston's uh, pitcher was able to go all the way. So we now got the sports out of the way. We're on the week that was uh, coming up tomorrow night. We'll have some of the uh, college ball. Now we'll go to uh, our friends at the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, and the crystal ball, Larry Sabato's crystal ball. The subject of matter here is uh, the uh, jungle primary in Louisiana. Louisiana uh, 2019. Now, California has a similar setup there. Uh, what what basically happens is you take the uh, top two winners, and then you have a primary. If no one gets, obviously, 50 plus one. So this is what we're looking at here. Uh, J. Miles Coleman is the associate editor of the Crystal Ball is writing here on the 11th of October. The subject here is John Bell Edwards. Um, defied uh, the partisan lean of his uh, state in 2015, but he will have to navigate an increasingly partisan electorate to win again. He'll need Republican support, but he also need to energize, excuse me, <coughs> to energize the African-American, uh, African uh, voters. Uh, Louisiana's unique jumbo primary has shaped the contours of state elections for uh, 50 years and will be a key feature of the uh, 2019. Regionalism has all been, uh, uh, excuse me, salient in uh, Louisiana politics and, and should be a decisive factor in which Republican candidates make the runoff with Edwards, Representative Ralph Abraham, and a businessman named uh, Eddie Raspany. Anyway, previewing the uh, Saturday Bayou Battle on the first day of class students at Louisiana State University walked into Professor Wayne uh, Parent's uh, Louisiana government course to kick off the spring 2014 uh, semester as of lecture progress uh, Parent uh, longtime authority on state elections summed up uh, his observations one thing I hope you will learn from this class is that Louisiana politics is volatile Sure enough, that uh, November, the state would uh, top its uh, senior senator and then go on to elevate a lonely state legislature to the governor's mansion the next year. When the lecture turned to the 2015 gubernatorial race, this legislate, uh, legislator came up and who was then the only announced Democratic candidate. I hear this guy's name is John Bell Edwards. is supposed to have a hell of a background parents said, but uh, I think the state may uh, just be too red. 
Then State Representative John Bell Edwards uh, fit his uh, conservative state about as well as any Democrat could. He was pro-life, pro-gun, moderate, who's uh, training at West Point, became a, rec uh, a recurring theme in his campaign. The early front runner, runner was David Vitter, uh, senator, was increasingly weighted down by incumbent uh, Bobby Gentle, Gentle's uh, horrible image in the state, as well as a personal scandal that he could never put to rest in the November runoff. Edwards' uh, unique profile as a candidate coupled with GOP's in, uh, inability to unite behind Vitter uh, culminated in a 56 to 44 percent win for the Democrats. This made Louisiana the only state in the Deep South to gain a Democratic governor during uh, the uh, tenure of Barack Obama. Edwards, uh, excuse me, long uh, dismissed as an accidental governor by some, Edwards is now tasked with uh, showing that his earlier win uh, simply wasn't a product of favorable circumstances. Well, many wins are a product of uh, favorable uh, circumstances, including D.J. Trump's. Edwards inherited a uh, budget chart fall from uh, Jindal. Jindal, Bobby Jindal uh, ran uh, for president and never went anywhere. He generally kept uh, good uh, but uh, not great approval ratings while putting the state's a financial house in order. Still, statewide races are uh, taking on increasingly federal uh, <clears throat> uh, timbre uh, uh, when uh, the uh, GOP, uh, when, which gives the GOP an opening, excuse me, the Louisiana electorate owes much of its uh, volatile character to its political history, often grouped with the rest of the South. Louisiana is culturally a conglomerate of three states. One of the uh, busiest ports in the country, uh, New Orleans, is situated at the uh, mouth of the Mississippi, which starts in northern Minnesota and runs all the way down through Missouri, and it finally ends up in Louisiana. It saw significant influx of immigrants from places like Ireland, Italy, and Germany uh, during the 19th century. The result was an urban political culture similar to that of New York City. And not only that, uh, you have you have that uh, uh, sprinkled in uh, with uh, the Francophon uh, people in the Southwest. Uh, Arcadia was settled by Francophon expats from uh, Canada who fled uh, British rule in the uh, 18th uh, century. Despite their uh, distant legions and different style of jumbo, Metro, New Orleans, and Cajun country are bound by a Catholic tradition. So, Northern Louisiana was settled uh, by uh, Protestants and have more in common with Mississippi than Iowa, uh, southern region of the state. Additionally, African Americans make up roughly a third of the state population, very large population in Louisiana. They had dispensed throughout the uh, three regions. Uh, decades of factionalism have uh, hosted a series of distrust in the state uh, body politics. As a result, successful statewide candidates have to build broad coalitions. During the 20s, an upstart uh, politician from Wynn Paris, his name was Huey P. Long, which Huey Long of the Black Panther Party was named after him, was running for governor, a Protestant uh, Long needed Cajun votes, so while uh, sweeping through Arcadia, Long uh, recalled that as a boy, I would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and I would hitch our old hoss uh, up to the buggy and take my Catholic grandparents to Mass. I would then bring them home, and at 10 o'clock I would hitch up the old hoss again, and I would take my Baptist grandparents to church. After, campaign, uh, after uh, a, a campaign event, a surprise a colleague approached him. I didn't know you had Catholic grandparents. Uh, long if I don't be a damn fool. We didn't even own a hoss. <laughs> this is interesting. T. Uh, Harry Williams uh, leads his uh, biography of Long with the uh, antidote. The story seemed uh, too good to be true, but people who should <laughs> know swear that it is true, he wrote. Looking uh, to uh, Saturday's primary by bringing... Uh, North-South Divide, uh, bridging, excuse me, has been a high priority for this uh, representative named Ralph uh, Abraham. He is a Republican in the 5th District of Louisiana, family doctor, family doctor and veterinarian by training. Oh, boy. He's a family doctor and hoss doctor. 
He hails from Monroe area and uh, has represented Northeast uh, part of the state since 2015 in Congress. While uh, the Regent uh, Rip isn't as stark today, uh, nationalization has generated a more partisan driven divide. Most of the state's population lives south of his 5th uh, district. In the gubernatorial primary, the public service commissioner Scott uh, Angley uh, Cajun base uh, nearly put him in the runoff. He carried the uh, southwest district as three. Uh, Arcadia has uh, no favorite son this time. The uh, Abrams campaign has, has moved to fill this gap. Uh, somebody named Clay uh, Higgins has stumped uh, for his uh, northern colleague. The last time a, a, a Louisiana governor from the Northeast was elected uh, was uh, in uh, 1968. Ironically, if Abrams can replicate that f- uh, feat uh, five decades later, it would be with Cajun help. And this is kind of interesting here uh, where the votes uh, came from. This is uh, Edwards at 28% out of the 1st Congressional District, 68.1% out of the 2nd, and 31.5% out of the 3rd, and the 4th, 39 and 40.1% out of the 5th, and uh, 35.5%, a total of 39.9% is what he was in, and Vitter, uh, 23 there, so it was... Well, he was may uh, make inroads outside his base region. His fundraising has been subpar throughout the campaign. This Eddie uh, Rapini, I suppose, has poured $11 million of own money into the race. A, a Republican donor with a, a tone reminiscent of the late uh, Ross Perot. Rapini uh, has, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name, has, uh, millions, has made millions in the construction industry, according to a source. Riponi's, uh, Riponi, I think is how he pronounces that. Business risk may be, be best suited for Republicans in uh, suburban uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans as opposed to Abraham's background as a country doctor. Well, he's not even a country doctor, he's a vet. From a regional perspective, the 2020 race may offer the best uh, parallel to the current uh, 2002, I'm sorry. Uh, that year, uh, Mary Landrew was uh, seeking a second term. Her opponent... Uh, was uh, the uh, state commissioner of elections, uh, Suzanne uh, Terrell, and Representative uh, Coxey. Although there were other candidates, including uh, Tony Perkins, man of the legislature, now president. Oh, boy. Huh. So he went in religious business, Tony Perkins. To uh, retain crossover appeal in her red uh, training district, Landry emphasized her work with then-President G.W. Bush while keeping a uh, monicum of uh, GOP support was important. This strategy also generated rumblings of neglect uh, from African American voters, a core constituency. Edwards has likewise uh, played up his relationship with uh, Trump. Perhaps not coincidentally, the early voting suggests a less, uh, less than uh, engaged uh, African electorate. On primary day, um, Landrew took 46% and was a force into a runoff which she evidently won, and like Edwards likewise has generated, has generally been a polling around a 45%. Cooksey, who represented the rural 5th district in Northern Louisiana, couldn't uh, find much support outside Northern Louisiana and was squeezed out of the runoff. So this is what uh, Mary uh, Landrew did in 2002. She got 46% of the vote. Susan Terrell, 27%. Cooksey, uh, 13%, and this Tony Perkins, 9%. Godward Perkins. Terrell, who had been backing the national, uh, had the, uh, who had the back of the national public finished the head of, uh, Cooksey in almost every, uh, southern parish and outpolled him in, uh, Shreveport, the hometown of Charlie Cook, of the Cook Report. Polling, uh, from, uh, Republican posters and analysts, uh, John, uh, Cavillon, Cavillon, showed that a similar scenario could take place uh, Saturday. Uh, puts uh, Raponi ahead of uh, Raponi ahead of S R I S P O N E. 
ahead of Abrams 31 to 10 in the Baton Rouge area and gives him a small lead in other areas there. The Law of the Jungle, Abraham and Rapini have been battling for second place in recent polls, although the momentum seems to be with Rapini, and he has the money. Most uh, public uh, posters seem to agree that Edwards would fall short of 50%. I've seen him leading in uh, one poll I looked at there, and then you'll have a November 16th runoff under the Jungle Primary Law. Jungle Primary has been a featured state's political landscape for 50 years. Until 1970, Louisiana needs a uh, more common uh, partisan uh, use, excuse me, partisan primary system in his first term. Edward Edwards, remember him, no relation to the current governor, proposed the jungle primary system. He framed it as fiscal responsible, moving it uh, its uh, potential to resolve elections after one round of balloting, while also pitching it as a means to expand voter choice. Voters to be free to select any candidate, regardless of party. California now does that. A simple exclamation could be found in the partisan realities of today. Louisiana is still overwhelmingly Democratic. In the 80s, a major party conflict fell on a fractional lines, famously in the decades following the Kingfish's death. Uh, Kingfish, that's Huey Long, died in 1935. State politics was a tug of war between uh, Long Lawless and anti Long Wallace. The uh, law there, uh, his uh, uh, biography, Edwards, felt it was unfair, but Republican candidates who uh, rarely faced inter party uh, competition would get a clean shot in the general election. Democrats, by contrast, would often do it contentious and costly primaries. So Edwards, uh, bear that out. Edwards uh, finished with 24%. This was uh, in a 17-person uh, race in uh, ensuring the Democratic runoff. His statewide career was nearly halted in uh, in its infancy by a Shreveport uh, legislator, J. Bennett Johnson, who held Edwards to just uh, 502 Months later, Johnson was elected to the Senate. Remember him? And then there was somebody, uh, David uh, Teeter, carried the banner for the Republicans. Anyway, this is in uh, 1972. Edward Edwards uh, won the uh, race uh, by uh, 23.6. And then various other characters. Danger sign for Edwards. Now, this is John Bell. The younger Edwards uh, seems poised to win outright at various points uh, during the campaign, given the nature of his opponents. History is against him. Uh, of the 11 uh, gubernatorial races that have taken place since the advent of the jungle uh, primary, all but one of uh, five scenarios now a uh, clear winner. Bobby General took um, 54% in 2007, but still finished uh, 36% sent ahead of the next person, notably Edwin Edwards was the last Democrat to win without a runoff. as back in uh, 1983. So these are some of the uh, people here. Uh, Bobby Jindal, uh, his, his share was 65.8%. Uh, uh, that was in 2011, 2007, 53.9. And his margin was a uh, uh, in 2011, 49.9 and 36.4 in 2007. And Edwin Edwards, uh, he was at 25.9 uh, in uh, 1983 and 1975. Now, he's been around. Edwin Edwards, uh, I think he's still alive. He's been there forever. Period. Now, these are some of the vote tallies here, and let me think here. Uh, governor uh, in the primary, a uh, number of voters uh, here, and of oh, his early voting. Sorry about that. Uh, there were 374,190 votes. Uh, Europeans, uh, 72.1. African Americans, 25.2. And the Democrats, uh, this is where it became very, is uh, 1.9% uh, separates them, the Democrats and Republicans. And let's see, the uh, Senate runoff, uh, 186,230, uh, slightly higher there for Europeans at 73.2 and African Americans at 
24.1 and we won't go into some of those others but you you can see uh, the African American vote has gotten as high as 29.7 uh, and oh this is a presidential race on uh, Barack Obama in 2012 African American vote was 33.1 uh, the Europeans was 63.8 and the final there, um, well, and this was early voting, incidentally. Okay. Anyway, we won't get into a lot of that on early voting there. You can kind of see what was first. While it's rabbit, Republicans outvote Democrats in early voting Louisiana. They came close last week. Oh, we talked about that 1.9 uh, there. Partisan composition isn't a perfect uh, electoral indicator in Louisiana as Many old conservatives still register with the party of Jackson as the Democrats, but uh, such a small advantage is hardly in, uh, encouraging for Democrats. No doubt. And some of these early voting going on here, the Democrats had uh, early prior in 2005, they had 50.7, the GOP 35.9, others 14.4. This time around, it was only 43.4 and 41.4. Uh, five for the uh, GOP. A second sign, uh, danger sign for Edwards is early return. A sluggish lack of enthusiasm with African American voters. Conventionalism is a uh, where's conventionalism? Need a large uh, turnout, no doubt about that. That's somewhere we lost it here. But anyway, that's yeah, that is Louisiana, and it'd be interesting to see conventional wisdom by Democrats. Uh, to win in Louisiana, they need 30% of the uh, European vote, coupled with an electorate that is close as possible to 30% of the African vote there. It follows the vote J. Simpson. In other words, the latter part of that equation is typically easier to achieve. Edwards had a 28% uh, African uh, of the electorate. That's what he got. That included up to 30% in the runoff. Landry generated similar healthy numbers with African Americans, but lost because she faced an impeccable uh, European electorate. Ironically, Edwards is still uh, competitive with uh, Europeans. So they pick him at 31%. He needs to be there. Let's see if he can pull something off here. Uh, finally, one of the hallmarks of Edwards' runoff victory was a low turnout. He won with uh, 647,000 votes, which was good for 56% of the vote. In the last competitive uh, gubernatorial race, the late Kathleen uh, Blanco earned uh, 731,000 votes but just got 52% of the uh, vote. With uh, higher uh, turnouts, they tend to uh, behave more like they would in a presidential election in Louisiana. This moment would favor Republicans. So it'll be interesting to see how this turnout goes. We'll uh, start to look at that in... Uh, Edwards a re-election down if Trump ultimately uh, torpedoes a re re-election prospects it wouldn't be the first time presidents influenced the dynamic though he elevate, uh, evidently rose to become uh, the majority leader the late uh, Hale Boggs he was uh, his cookie uh, just died uh, was uh, cut out of the Democratic gubernatorial race in 1952 Boggs his biggest liability was association with the deeply unpopular Harry S. Truman of uh, Independence, Missouri, 40 years later, ahead of the uh, 91 uh, gubernatorial election, the uh, G.H.W. G. Bush White House was created with uh, the then uh, Governor uh, Buddy Rome, I remember him, to switch parties, ironically, Bush uh, would ultimately have to back a Democrat that year. Roma finished the third in the primary there, and Lazarus versus the Wizard. <laughs> Edwards has once again won the governorship by defeating David Duke. Edwards would later serve a prison term for corruption. <laughs> All things considered, we'll keep the ratings that leads Democrat uh, in advance of a Saturday's uh, primary. So I'm assuming this. Uh, tomorrow there, um, with, uh, an outright Edwards win is seeing less likely, but soft Republicans uh, could conceivably save him. Um, what, 48 to 49? They call it a toss-up. 
The race may be more like a toss-up, and that's the end of our little situation here from the people at the University of Virginia. Let's uh, go here to have a little bit of polling. We don't really have a lot of polling uh, to talk about. Uh, let's see, was it a Fox News poll we had? No, NPR. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, Fox News poll. This is a national poll uh, today uh, on the 11th. Uh, has Biden ahead by 10 points. Uh, Liz Warren at 22. Bernie Sanders at 17. Old Buddha Judge out of uh, uh, Indiana. Selbin at 4. Harris uh, 5. Yang 2. Beto Rock at 3. He's coming up there. And Amy Klobuchar 2. Senator Booker 2 there. And even Marianne Williams has 1. But if we match those up, with a DJ Trump, Biden's ahead by 10. Uh, Liz Warren's have been by 10. Old DJ Trump in a Fox News poll. And Bernie Sanders, uh, 9 there. On a Thursday, NPR, uh, PBS, uh, Marcus uh, poll here uh, has approval rating at 45. I think that's a little bit high. And Fox News only at 43. This is DJ Trump's approval rating, incidentally. Rasmussen, the Republican friendly one, at 47. And generic ballot of three points ahead there. Democrats 43, Republicans 40. And uh, that's, I think, all we have uh, to highlight here. Yeah. Oh, PPP. I hadn't given PPP. Uh, this is in uh, North Carolina. They have uh, Biden at 39, Warren at 22. Bernie Sanders at only six, Blue Judge at nine. This is a strange poll here. Anyway, there are matchups here. Uh, Warren by three, 49 to 46 over uh, DJ Trump. It's in North Carolina. This is uh, Trump versus uh, Biden. Biden up by five. And Bernie Sanders up by one. Boone Judge, uh, actually Trump's up by one. And Harris, they are tied up. So I hadn't seen the PPP uh, poll here. Eh, PPP is a strange poll. They're up and they're down. I'm not certain what's going on in North Carolina there. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm not sure how Bernie came out with six. Anyway, this is on the 9th that we had this particular poll here. Now let me uh, look and see. Dave Roberts. I was thinking of Dave Roberts. We won't spend any time on Dave Roberts. This is sporting news here. Uh, Dave Roberts was booed. Well, this is from the other night. We won't get into that. Poor old Dave Roberts there. Dort is out. Dave Roberts could lose his job on that. Didn't want to jump back much to that. And uh, let's see. Some of the other little niceties here. This is from the Washington Post. At least four uh, national security officials raised alarms about a Ukrainian policy before and after uh, the call by D.J. Trump to the Ukrainian uh, president. And this is uh, by Greg Jaffe and Greg Miller. At least four were uh, so alarmed by the Trump administration's attempt to pressure uh, Ukraine for political purposes before and after the call. That was on the 25th. The nature and time in the previously undisclosed discussions. Security Council legal advisor John uh, Eisenberg um, indicated that officials were delivering warnings throughout through official uh, channels uh, uh, earlier than previously uh, understood, including uh, before the call that precipitated a whistleblower complaint. At the time, the officials were unnerved by the removal of uh, the Ukrainian ambassador. Uh, There's some things about her out there. And subsequent efforts by this Yuli, uh, Giuliani there. And Zelensky, uh, John Bolton, was uh, being... Uh, pegged uh, by uh, subordinates about the problem uh, with what the president had said to Ukraine. Those concerned uh, and yeah, called um, attention. Officials said with minutes, senior officials, including Bolton, were being uh, pinged uh, by subordinates. Uh, Bolton and others scrambled to obtain the rough transcript was already being locked down as on the highly classified network. People were listening to this in real time. They were significantly concerned about what was going on. Alarm bells were ringing. One person familiar with the sequence of events inside the White House, who, like others, on the condition of anonymity, everybody wants to be 
It's unclear whether some of other officials who complained to Eichenberg, uh, uh, Eisenberg uh, about uh, also were the ones who later spoke to the whistleblower. So the whistleblower got his information uh, second party. The accounts uh, sh- uh, sharply at odds with Trump's depiction of what he called the perfect call. He said the same thing in the upper Midwest city of Minneapolis last night. Uh, officials said within uh, hours of the, the 9 a.m. conversation, a rough transcript compiled by aides had been moved from a widely shared uh, White House computer network to one normally reserved for the classified uh, documents. How to classify. Eisenberg uh, took action, I uh, it's not clear, after the warnings uh, he received in uh, July or after Trump's uh, Zelensky conversation. One official said Eisenberg vowed he would follow up a message uh, interpreted to mean that he intended to investigate the matter there. And we'll see where that rolled. More questions about this uh, coming up here. Uh, and let me finish this up here. Bolton went ballistic after the meeting, the official said in the ensuing days. Uh, NSA officials, including Bolton and uh, Kaplingerman, uh, huddled with their uh, huddled over their concerns about Ukraine. So I guess this Bolton is now being brought in here. Okay, here we go. Sutherland, uh, agenda in the Ukraine, which is not part of the European Union, begin to... Uh, Clarified during a meeting in the White House in early July with Bolton, then the representative of Kurt Volker, who has also resigned amidst the broad discussion in which White House officials were encouraging Ukraine to continue to work to eliminate corruption. Well, we have more on that. Two Russian uh, types were uh, detained at the airport. They're now in jail. And let me see if I can finish this up. Uh, Sunland uh, backed out of a scheduled appearance before the House Impeachment Committee. Uh, and let's see. Fauna Hill, who is top U.S. aide on Russia's schedule. Anyway, this this is this ambassador here, uh, Yankovic. Uh, is supposed to appear there. Now, these are the associates of Giuliani. This is developing into... Somewhat of a story here. Two business associates of Trump's uh, personal attorney, old Rudy Giuliani, have been arrested on, on campaign finance charges. Uh, they were trying to slip out of the country there. Igor uh, Furman and uh, Lev uh, Parsons had been helping uh, Giuliani investigate Democratic uh, presidential candidate... Uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden were arrested Wednesday at Dulles International Airport outside of Washington. They named after old uh, Dulles uh, the spy thing. They had one-way tickets on a flight out of the country. They had been on investigation by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. After a court appearance uh, Thursday in Alexander, Virginia, the pair were uh, approved for lease on a uh, million-dollar bonds on the condition they remain at their Florida home with GPS and the third-party uh, custodians, they will uh, they will remain in jail until those conditions are met. So they're not out of jail yet. More drama are coming out here. Uh, my take is the more drama that comes out here, the more interesting this gets to be. The indictment does not allege any wrongdoing by the president or his campaign, but the charges of political donations made for the secret benefit of a foreign interest adds to a growing legal and political pressure on D.J. Trump and his lackey there. These allegations are not about some uh, technic- uh, technicality, a civil violation or error in form. That's from William uh, Sweeney, Jr., head of the FBI office in New York. This investigation is about corrupt behavior and deliberate law-breaking. Okay. So, here we go again. John Dewar, a lawyer for uh, oh, okay, uh, for Furman, told Congress in a statement earlier this week that they had been assisting uh, Giuliani in his work on behalf of the president. The two uh, 
also claimed in interviews and social media posting to have attended an eight-person session with Trump in uh, Washington 2018. Trump says he doesn't remember them. This gets more interesting. The charges uh, vet the uh, two uh, disguised as source of $325,000 donation made in 2018 to America First. That was the main pro-Trump uh, super lobby by giving the money in the name of global energy producers a purported liquefied gas uh, company that uh, they control. Federal prosecutors said the uh, company was used as a front to disguise the funds a true source and that the money for the political action committee came uh, from a private uh, leaning, uh, leaning, uh, leaning uh, transaction between uh, this uh, Fruman and third parties. Indictment does not involve any further details, nor does identify the American First as the recipient. But after the charges were announced, the Political Action Committee issued a statement acknowledging the donation. So here we go again. Since late uh, 2018, the two Florida-based business executives have been assisting Giuliani uh, pushed to get Ukrainian officials to investigate Biden and his son. Giuliani had no comment on this. Uh, they helped me find people, Giuliani claimed. Well, now they are found, I suppose. This is... Uh, this... Uh, Parnas... Uh, uh, Parnas told a post that Giuliani is a very good friend uh, whom he got to know uh, during 2006 while fundraising uh, for uh, DJ Trump. Prosecutors say the Parnas, uh, Ukrainian-born uh, U.S. citizens and Furman... Belarus uh, citizen a uh, scheme to exceed campaign donation uh, limits. So here we go with Skype again. They set up a Skype call for Giuliani late in 2018 with Victor uh, Skokin, who uh, was a Ukrainian prosecutor and he was corrupt. The indictment does identify the congressman by a uh, name. But political records indicate he was former Texas Congressman Pete Sessions, who lost his re-election. So, there you go. All right. Let me see what our time is here. I think we have time to get in a little bit of George Will here. At least, um... Title of his little piece here is... The sprawling uh, president adds uh, self-impeachment to his repertoire. Donald Trump, an ongoing uh, eruption of self-refuting uh, statements. I'm a very stable uh, genius with very good brain. Oh boy. He's adding, uh, let's see, self-impeachment to his repertoire. <laughs> uh, swirling uh, downward in a uh, tightening uh, genre. This increasingly on the end public performance includes one with uh, uh, Finland's uh, dumbfounded president looking on uh, are as alarming as they are embarrassing his decision regarding um, this is the Syrian and Kurds was made uh, so flippantly uh, that it uh, stirred the uh, <laughs> oh boy the faith uh, uh, flickers of uh, thinking among uh, Congress is a vegetated Republicans <laughs> because of the uh, frivolity, frivolousness and stupidity are neither high crimes nor misdemeanors. His decision, however, is contemptible because it betrays the American Curtis friends. This was the uh, Curtis article I was thinking about here. It is, uh, it is not impeachable offense. It should, however, color the uh, impeachment debate because it co coincides with an extraordinary in, in impeachment meant uh, impeachment, uh, excuse me, perennial challenge to Congress, constitutional duty to conduct oversight on the executive branch. Aside from the rhetoric uh, berates, Republicans are uh, acquiescing, acquiescing to Trump uh, made a foreign policy by and for this uh, Vesra. This might and should c compete with the Iraqi war beginning in 2003, destruction of Republican advantage regarding foreign policy. Democrats are from the uh, from the president's creation of the Cold War strategy, 
from Harry S. Truman and Secretary of State Dean Acheson was around there. Member of right wing Henry Scoop Jackson, he's out of Washington State. And advisors such as Max Kiplinger and old right wing Gene uh, Kirkpatrick, they built a diplomatic architecture that is NATO, helped to maintain military muscle that won the war. But the party uh, fracture over Vietnam, veering in uh, to uh, the uh, diplomacy uh, uh, interpretation of American history, uh, home and abroad, and a portion of the party uh, pioneered a revisionist, a uh, uh, revised, excuse me, isolationism, conservative isolationism, has said America was uh, too virtuous for involvement in the failed world. Progressive isolationism said America was uh, too uh, fatal to improve the less fatal world. Hence, Republicans acquired a uh, durable advantage uh, concerning the core presidential uh, responsibility, national security, durable, not indestructible. If Democrats will take the nation's security as seriously as Trump injures it casually. Trump's gross uh, and uh, comprehensive incompetence now increase <laughs> impinges upon the core presidential responsibilities should but uh, will not uh, cause congressional Republicans to value their own or their own institutions dignity and exercise its power more vigorously than they their profess uh, fealty to uh, Trump. He has issued a categorical refusal to supply witnesses documents to the House investigation where he committed uh, impeachable offenses regarding Ukraine. This refusal, which is an uh, anonymous uh, to uh, invoking the Fifth Amendment protection against, oh boy, self-incrimination justified as the inference of guilt. Now that is, that is factually not incorrect. You have your right to invoke your Fifth uh, Anonymous. Uh, worse, this refusal attacks our constitutional Regime, uh, so it refutes itself as an impeachable offense. A uh, comparative behavior was in uh, 1974 when then the House Articles Impeachment against Richard Nixon uh, indicted him for failing without a lawful cause or exercise to produce papers and things as directed by a duly uh, authorized subpoena issued by the House Committee for having. Uh, interpose the uh, powers of the presidents to get presidency against the lawful subpoena of the House. If Trump gets away with this blanket uh, non-compliance, the Constitution impeachment provision, as it concerns the president, will effectively be repealed, and from a presidential uh, corruption will be largely immune against punishment. Federalist Paper 51, uh, James Madison anticipated a wholesale rivalry and uh, constructive tension between uh, the government's two political branches. Ambition uh, must uh, be made uh, to uh, counteract ambition. The interests of man must be connected to the constitutional rights of the place. Equilibrium between the ban- branches excuse me, depends upon supplying by uh, opposite and rival uh, interests. The uh, defect of better motives, but equilibrium has vanished as members of Congress think entirely as a party operatives, not as institutionalists. Trump is uh, not uh, not just aggressively, but uh, lawlessly exercising the interests of his uh, place. Counting on Congress after decades of uh, lassitude regarding its interests, and being uh, ineffective uh, combatant, uh, Trump's argument injects into him uh, by subordinates who understand that uh, absurdity is his vocation. It's essential that the Constitution impeachment, uh, essentially that the Constitution impeachment vision are unconstitutional. The canine uh, loyalty of uh, Senate Republicans will keep Trump in office, but until he uh, complies with the House uh, subpoenas, the House must not uh, limpidly hope uh, federal judges will enforce their oversight. Instead, the House uh, should uh, wield its uh, fundamental powers that the uh, purse to impose uh, uh, excurringly uh, course on the uh, executive branch noncompliance. In 13 months, all congressional Republicans who have not def- uh, 
defended Congress by exercising the constitutional right of place should be defeated if the uh, Republicans uh, continue their uh, genuflections at uh, Trump's altar. <laughs> the appropriate 2020 outcome will be a Republican thrashing so severe, losing the House, the Senate, and the electoral votes, say, of Georgia. Now, this is interesting here. Georgia, um, Arizona, North Carolina, even Texas, but the party slow growing careers might notice the hazards uh, teetering uh, their uh, careers to a downward spiraling scuffle. Anyway, this is interesting by George Will. This is where we'll close it out. We'll see you on the uh, week that was tomorrow night. We're also working on a, a, a Numbers Man, a Numbers Man show. And we hope to have uh, uh, an open source report of this uh, weekend, the several days that encompass the weekend. Nonetheless, this is Boston Red in the Jared Pippen broadcast booth on the 11th of October 2019. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you on the week when was. Good day.